Okay, you're F2 in OBG, patient is 29 years old, she's 36 weeks pregnant, has been referred to the hospital. Talk to the patient, assess the condition and discuss the plan of management. So we have got a lady 29 and a 36 weeks pregnancy, right? So let's see. We have been given some uh, examination points as well. Blood pressure is 160, 110. She is hypertensive. Right. Urine protein 3 plus. Okay. And the patient blood pressure in the first booking was 110, 70. So we have got a scenario. It's an OSCE scenario, hypothetical scenario, where the lady, she is 36 weeks pregnant. Uh, the blood pressure is 160, 110. And we have got urine protein 3 plus right so that is what we have got so when we have got these three findings when we have got pregnancy which is more than 20 weeks we have got high blood pressure and we have got urine protein that is simply is simply pre -eclampsia. so this station actually this OSCE station in the question itself we got the idea that this is pre -eclampsia. so we should be aware of lots of things about pre -eclampsia. First of all, if you're talking about the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia, see preeclampsia will be presenting with lots of lots of things. A uh, patient might have uh, tummy pain, might have nausea, vomiting, pretty important. Headache is very, very important. Visual changes, blurry vision, double vision you might have. Swelling in the feet is important. Vaginal bleeding is important. You know, in these kind of things, you can remember it uh, uh, by going from head to toe. Headache is there. Visual changes, blurring vision is there, nausea, vomiting is there, abdominal pain is there, then vaginal bleeding is there, then swelling in the feet is there. So we can remember all the signs, symptoms of preeclampsia in this way, right? And it's very, very important. And uh, you will see lots of patients, females going into preeclampsia when they are pregnant. So we have to be very, very careful, right? And there are lots of lots of risk factor why the patient has got preeclampsia. So when they are pregnant, if the age is more than forty, it is actually a uh, sign actually risk factor for preeclampsia first pregnancy itself is a risk factor and if you have got more than 10 years of gap in between two pregnancies that's also a risk factor for preeclampsia so first pregnancy age more than 40 years family history of uh, preeclampsia family history of hypertension patient is having past medical history of diabetes or hypertension or kidney disease or lupus right so all these things will be the risk factor of preeclampsia so if patient is having diabetes or hypertension or family has got hypertension diabetes history or uh, uh, family has got uh, history of preeclampsia so all these will add up in preeclampsia and uh, personal lifestyle history we can cover asking smoking alcohol obesity all these things will add up in preeclampsia right so we have got lots of signs symptoms and risk factor because you know when patient has got one condition when patient has got for example preeclampsia they'll be asking during the conversation why do i have preeclampsia and you might be getting one of the reason maybe it's your first pregnancy maybe you have got family history maybe you have you are uh, hypertensive already maybe you have got kidney problem maybe your age is more than 40 whatever or maybe you are pregnant with twins or triplets that is also a reason of preeclampsia right so what we do uh, uh, we have to do the routine bloods urine protein that is definitely we have to check ultrasound scan will be doing and CTG for the baby. You know, whenever you are doing a history in case of uh, uh, gynae ops, you are having two patients most of the time you will see in obstetrics actually. Two patients, one is the female and another is baby. So in this we are asking lots of questions for the female. We are asking tummy pain, nausea, vomiting, headache, visual changes, swelling in the feet, vaginal bleeding. We need to ask one question for the baby as well. Were you able to feel the kick of the baby? Kicking of the baby. So that is very, very important. Kicking of the baby is very, very important. So we should be aware of this thing. We should be knowing this thing. This question is very, very important. And when we do the investigation, we have to do investigation for the mother. Routine blood, urine check, we are doing ultrasound scan, we are doing. And definitely we need to do cardiac tachography as well. That's for the child, child well-being, right? Always whenever we have got uh, preeclampsia, it's better to keep uh, them in the hospital for some time. Because this lady, she's 36 weeks pregnant. And uh, when we do the delivery, after 37 weeks, 
when we do delivery it is after 37 weeks we do the delivery if if any time it is creating problem it is dangerous for the mother or for the baby we can uh, deliver we can uh, deliver the baby there and then otherwise if everything is going well we usually do it uh, after 37 weeks of pregnancy because the lungs will be fully matured after that right so that is how we go about it so if the lady is 36 weeks pregnant what we do we have to admit we have to monitor and we'll be giving the medication we'll be giving antihypertensives uh, mainly we can go for labetalol right that is either labetalol is the treatment of choice for our hypertension and also we'll be keeping an eye on urine protein as well that is the reason we are admitting isn't it so what you will be doing with urine protein uh, we'll be having an idea like how much your protein she's using i mean losing and once we're able to control then uh, situation will be under control so we are admissioning we are doing admission monitoring the child and monitoring the mother giving antihypertensive and after talking to the senior we might consider giving a, one of the thing one of the treatment that is magnesium sulfate actually this is for uh, uh, for the complication of preeclampsia because preeclampsia can uh, give rise to eclampsia which is uh, fits right so you might have history for uh, these things you might have previous history or we might see other uh, things in these kind of scenarios so we have to be very careful we have to ask uh, about any fits if they didn't have still to prevent the complication we have to mention this like i'll speaking to my senior and we may consider giving you uh, magnesium sulfate which is uh, for one of the complication of preeclampsia right and all the medications we are talking about in these things they are very much safe for the baby because see in these uh, kinds of cases you'll see mother they are very much concerned about the baby and they are very much concerned about uh, the medication that we are giving it to them so we have to be very sure that all these medications are pretty safe right and admission is uh, necessary otherwise there might be some problem with the uh, baby right so we convince the patient to stay in the hospital and in these kind of patients you know we have to monitor throughout the delivery process uh, and uh, can they have normal delivery yes if everything is under control we can actually try for normal delivery that is not a problem but uh, sometime they ask for the pool delivery whether we can have the delivery in the pool you know uh, we have to monitor them and it is not possible to monitor them in the pool moreover if they get eclampsia they get the fit it is difficult for us to monitor in the pool so it's advisable not to go for any of these uh, pool delivery so that is the treatment plan we have got when she is 36 weeks pregnant if she is 37 we'll deliver if she is 38 for example what we do we have to induce the labor right so we have to see this stuff and we have to go accordingly we have to see if she's 36 she's 37 she's 38 how much is uh, how far she is in the pregnancy right so we deliver the baby in preeclampsia 37 weeks of uh, gestation after 37 weeks of uh, gestation right so that's our preeclampsia thank you